Blunty, what the hell is CIA Jeep doors? Because I'm a little concerned that we're going to get the wrong kind of attention by showing off the CIA's Jeep doors. Well, um, <laughs> I'm sure there's some effect on monetization by saying CIA, but uh, CIA uh -oh. Jeep... Uh oh the algorithm <laughs> has tagged us. The CIA is looking. <laughs> um, but, so CIA Jeep doors um, is an anagram for... Uh, DJI Aeroscope. And CIA Jeep doors is a way to uh, essentially remove the doors in your Jeep is what they re you refer to it as. And it's removing the remote ID and the broadcasting Aeroscope system from any DJI system. Um, so this is basically just a, a GitHub repository somebody has built um, to remove, yeah, to remove any remote ID tracking or Aeroscope information that is in your DJI drone. And they do it because they feel like it is not uh, it's not right of DJI to not allow you to remove it. And they right. quote in here a lot of the different things that we've talked about before, some of the remote ID violations of what people consider violations of Fourth Amendment, and they're still arguing about uh, summary of some of the cases. And uh, yeah, basically a way to remove remote ID from your drone if you feel like you want to do that. So, And um, we recently did a story about Aeroscope being used in, uh, in Ukraine, in conflict zones. Uh, yep. Because DJI drones are used by uh, people on in all areas, including the military. Even though DJI says, "No, no, do not do that. These are not for." Did you not see at the first page of the manual? Not for military use. So I don't know. Maybe they didn't read the manual, and they were also using yep. Aeroscope, uh, say some news stories, uh, to track them. And so I mean, it's one thing to say this is uh, something that could be used by uh, a hobbyist who doesn't want to be tracked, but it, you know, potentially there's a really much more uh, significant use for this, uh, assuming it works as advertised. So yeah. I don't know who, I don't know who out there needs to hear this, but apparently you can do that. Yeah. Um, T-Bell in the chat asked where the RDQ cases were still waiting on the judge's decisions um, from the case that they heard in front of the district court. Is that right? District. Yes, court. I believe that's right. Okay. So they, they did the deliberations, appeals, and now eventually they'll come back with a decision. Is there a time? There's got to be a time frame, like a maximum. I think on average it's six months. I think we're at like five months right now, and I read it's on average six months. Yeah. So it's coming. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think one thing I'll say just about that is that we have the requirement, I believe it's September or October, the requirement starts for manufacturers to be able to add remote ID to their drones. So I hope we get a decision soon enough to slow that down. Yeah, I mean, I have, yeah. it's, it's inconceivable what the FPV world would do to comply with this. As far as I know, there still isn't really a attachable, a remote ID module. In like, no one's even making them. Yeah. I think it's, there's like yeah. one from Europe that could yes. theoretically qualify. Yeah, I think France, or somebody like that has a system currently, and there are a couple companies that have a small device that works for those systems, but... Um, and I know DJI has a system internally that you can enable in those areas, but yeah, so the, I don't know. So we, It'll be we, interesting we, to see how this all rolls out. And hopefully, I would hope by that point, you know, it's only April or May, so hopefully by, yeah. you know, September when this starts that we'll have some kind of decision. I mean, if the decision doesn't come in the June, July timeframe, and if yeah. the decision doesn't say, hey, Race Day Quads wins, this can't go forward, that's not going to leave a big window for all these manufacturers to figure out what the hell they're going to do. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Well, the good news is that most of these manufacturers aren't based in the USA anyway. So if history is any guide, they will continue to manufacture the products, even though they're not compliant with the law, continue to import and sell them to U.S. consumers who will use them, even though they're not compliant with the law. Yeah. I guess we'll see. <laughs> I guess we'll see. 